Now that we have successfully imported our Google Earth satellite image as a raster file, the next step is to convert it into a usable image base map by using the georeference function in Arc Pro. Raster files are essentially any digital image that consists of cells or pixels arranged in a grid. Each cell or pixel contains a value representing information. For example, our Google Earth satellite image has a set number of pixels that defines its resolution, and each pixel has an associated color value assigned to it. Higher resolution raster datasets usually have a smaller pick size in order to display more information. We see that our Google Earth image is in our contents pane, but it is not currently visible in our map view. Recall the zoom to layer functionality to navigate between datasets if you ever get lost. When we zoom to our Google Earth satellite image, we see that it is floating somewhat aimlessly in space. This is because raster datasets typically have an undefined coordinate system. To rectify this, we must use the georeference tool in ArcGIS. Making sure that we have the Google Earth image selected in the contents pane, we then click on the imagery tab, then click georeference. To begin the georeferencing process, we must select Add Control Points. These points will allow us to anchor our image to our DEM-derived base maps that have already been defined in a projected coordinate system. It should be noted that this process can be a little repetitive and tedious, however it is worth doing a thorough job, especially if you will rely heavily on satellite imagery when creating your geologic map. For the first control point, I like to find a feature that will be easily identifiable on both the image and the hill shade. Here I decided that the northernmost edge of the lava flow would be a good place to start. We place a control point first on the raster image. Then we must place the same anchor point on the hill shade. I can navigate to the hill shade by using the zoom to layer function. Notice when I place an anchor point on the hillshade at the same northernmost tip of the lava flow, the image then appears above our hillshade, albeit somewhat awkwardly. One control point is simply not enough to get the image in the right spot, so we must add more. It should be noted that I happen to begin the anchor point from the satellite image to the hillshade, but you can also begin the anchor point from the hillshade and then flip to the satellite image. For the second and third control point, these small lava flow lobes catch my eye as something that I could anchor confidently on both datasets. Now that my satellite image is more in line with my hillshade, I can simply toggle the satellite image on and off by checking and unchecking the feature in the table of contents. Now if we zoom out a bit, we can see that with each additional control point, our image is beginning to conform to our hillshade base map. Picking the most obvious landmarks or features is a great way to start, but another good practice in georeferencing is to try and get a control point in each corner of the raster image. The first few times georeferencing raster images may seemingly take forever, but with practice you will become faster with navigating between datasets and identifying quality control point locations. I strongly recommend using a mouse that has a roller wheel so that you can quickly zoom in and out when needed. Also, clicking down on the scroll wheel and dragging the mouse allows you to pan around your map view while the add control point function is activated as the default left click. A general rule of thumb for georeferencing is that you probably need more points than you think. However, you want to be confident in the tie points you are choosing. In short, quality and quantity are important here. Recall the swipe tool that is housed under the raster layer tab. This tool is extremely handy when georeferencing because it allows us to see if our satellite image is truly matching up with the underlying base map. To get back to adding control points, be sure to navigate back to the georeference tab. To view and evaluate our control points, we must access the control point table. Perhaps most important to us is the residual column in the far right. Each control point that we place will have some sort of X and Y error associated with it, known in ArcGIS as residual. 
the residual error for each control point is distributed amongst all control points, hence why it is a good strategy to have more control points in order to dilute the error. If, for example, you had a single control point that was completely put in the wrong spot, having more control points in the correct spots would minimize your error and result in a more accurate georeferencing. If you have residual values that are orders of magnitude higher than the rest of your other values, you can highlight them in the table and delete them. But remember, when you delete points, you are assigning more weight and trust to the other control points, and the way the residual errors are shared between them will change. ArcGIS Pro has several different mathematical transformations that users can switch between when georeferencing. These include first, second, and third order polynomial transformations, along with the adjust, projective, and spline. Note that some of them require varying amounts of points, though you should always have way more than the minimum 10 control points to meet the minimum demand for these transformations. I highly recommend switching between all the different transformations, noting how it distorts your image, and then using the swipe tool for each transformation to figure out which one most accurately projects your raster image onto your other base maps. When experimenting with the different transformations, I found that the second order polynomial seemed to be a good fit for matching my image to my base maps. Ultimately, when it comes to georeferencing, it is up to the user to make the final judgment call. You have done your due diligence when, one, you have added an abundant number of control points that have a roughly even distribution amongst your image, two, when you have checked your control point table for any erroneous points that have high residual error values, and three, when you have tested between the different transformations, including using the swipe tool to make sure that geologic features are perfectly aligned with your underlying hillshade. Before we finish, we want to save and export our georeference image to our Project Geo database. Navigate to the Imagery tab, then click Georeference, then click Save as New. For the output raster name, add underscore georef to the original name so we know which version is the georeferenced one. In the Export Raster pane, you can also specify the file output type, either TIFF, JPEG, or PNG. Note how our coordinate system is already set to NAD83 UTM Zone 12N projected coordinate system. Click Save. Now we can close the georeference tool and remove the original Google Earth JPEG from the contents pane. Notice how the georeference image isn't showing up under the geo database. This is a common occurrence and can easily be fixed by right clicking and refreshing the geo database. Lastly, I will show you how to use the clip raster tool. Your georeference image is accurate where you placed your control points, but not as accurate elsewhere. We can crop the satellite image extent to match our other data sets. Use the search bar at the top and look for the Clip Raster Data Management tool. Choose the satellite image as the input and choose the projected DEM as the output extent. I like to add an underscore clip to the output raster dataset name to remind myself that the new image has been cropped. Now we can remove the SP Google Earth GeoRef from the contents pane, leaving behind only the clipped extent.
Our map view is now nice and tidy. One last order of business is to drag our clipped and georeferenced satellite image into our base maps group layer in the contents pane. In the next video, I will show you how to use the measure tool, the profile tool, and how to generate topographic contour lines.